the word of God to life like it was a football field. Like it was something that you was going and you about to, you about to have a good time. But we do have some challenges going on at the picnic today. And you know, I, I, I got to go change clothes so I can, get, I can get geared up and get ready to, 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 to you know, you know, who are here like to win? Right? Now, now don't be trying to be all sanctified. Everybody like to win, right? <laughs> anointed and call my God. And when he brings the word, he brings it to life. He brings it to life. And I thank God for that. I thank God for this awesome man of God. And I thank God for he's the pastor and he's the shepherd over my soul as well as the shepherd of many others here and future members here that may be in the audience. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so I'd like to present to you our pastor, Elder Byron Thompson. That's grateful that God loved you. At the end of the day, He loves me. At the end of the day, He loves me. At the end of the day, He loves me. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, He loves me.
Minister in Charge, Minister Surya yeah. Ivy. Let's give her a hand. Yeah. To our praise and worship team, and man, let's give her a hand.
the fact, the word of God, the New Living Translation, the New, New International, all of those translations are in fact the word of God. The King James Version, however, becomes the one that's most close to the original text. That's why we read from the King James Version. And then we go into other versions to get a more common, um, current, current version of the wording. But the King James Version is the one that is originally closest to the original text. Amen? Amen. So with that being said, I want you to look at uh, Nehemiah chapter number 4, starting at verse number 13. Verse number 13. And for the sake of time, I'm going to read this out of the English Standard Version. But when you get home, if you have King James Version on your Bible, I want you to read in the King James Version just so you can get the context of it. Here are beginning to read another word of God. Do you have it? Yeah. Amen. And so in the lowest part of the space behind the wall, in one open place, I stationed the people by their clans, by their families, the King James said with their sword and their spears and their bows. I looked and arose and said to the rulers, the noblemen and the officials and to the rest of the people, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord who is great and terrible, the King James Version says. The word here is awesome. He causes all to come upon you. And fight for your brothers. Ooh, I love this. Fight for your sons. Fight for your daughters. Fight for your wives. And fight for your homes. Verse number 15 says, When our enemies heard that it was known to us and that God had frustrated their plans, we all returned to the wall in each of his work. From that day on, half of my servants worked on the construction and the half held their spears, shields, bows, coats of mail. And the leaders stood behind the whole house of Judah, who were building on the wall. Those who were carrying burdens were loaded in such a way that each labored on the work with one hand and held his weapon in the other. And each of the builders had his sword strapped at his side while he built the man who sounded the trumpet was beside me. Support I love. And I said to the noblemen, the nobles and the officials and to the rest of the people, the work is great and widely spread. And we are separated on the wall, far from one another. In the place where you hear the sound of the trumpet, rally to us there. Our God will fight for us. For the few moments I have with you, I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. It's, time it's time to fight for the family. Fight for the family. Wait for it. Wait, wait for it. Wait for it. Find another neighbor. Find another neighbor. Say, neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. Say, I came here for one reason alone. I came to fight for my family. Minister 
from Nehemiah so many years ago, and he explained something to me that I didn't know at the time, that Nehemiah wasn't a prophet. Nehemiah wasn't a priest. Nehemiah wasn't a king. Nehemiah was a cupbearer, a wine bearer for the king of Persia, whose name was Artaxerxes. And some of you historians know who Artaxerxes is. He is the Persian king, the god king, the god king who destroyed the Grecians 300. Right. He is that king that came out of India or Persia or Iran, Iraq. He came out of there and he destroyed the Greeks 300 whom we see a movie of. This same Artaxerxes is also in the next book after Nehemiah, Esther, is the king to whom which Esther will be married to. He was a very tyrannical leader. He killed off really, he killed so many Africans and so many Arabians in his quest. He was a tyrant of such. But Nehemiah, as he was led from captivity from, from, from Jerusalem to um, Shushan, where the king was, he was the taster of the wine because back in that day, um, people would poison the king and they would poison the king through his drink. And the king had a cupbearer who would drink the drink first and they would wait a while to see if he would die. And if he didn't die, then the king would drink of it. This same Nehemiah was the taster of wine for this king. And the Bible says that this king loved Nehemiah. He honored him. He, he, he respected him. And God gave Nehemiah favor with Artaxerxes. And Artaxerxes saw Nehemiah one day as he came into his court and said, Why are your continents down, Nehemiah? Why are you so sad within yourself? And Nehemiah said, yeah, My people, my country, my home is burning with fire. We can't keep the enemies out. They are overrunning our sacred city. And he says, what do you want to do? Nehemiah says, I can't answer you right now. But the scripture tells us that Nehemiah went and prayed and asked God to give him the answer. God told Nehemiah to ask the king to give you all the monies and supplies you need to rebuild the city walls and the city gates. Nehemiah asked the king for these things, and the king gave it to him. Nehemiah goes back to Jerusalem, him and some of the elders from the captivity, and they survey the land. They get to the land, and they see that the gates themselves are literally on fire. The Bible says that Nehemiah didn't say a word. He just examined the whole city, and then God gave him a plan. He said, Lord, what do you want us to do? God said, I want you to rebuild the gates. God tells him, here's how you're going to rebuild the gates. He says, I'm going to send you people who can work in the ministry, who, who can work toward your goal. I'm going to send you people who can help you rebuild the gates. The Bible says that because Nehemiah had the authority of the king, the people made him a governor. Nehemiah wasn't a priest. He wasn't a prophet. He wasn't a some sacred holy man which the oracle of God will come down from. Nehemiah was a politician. And let me just digress for a moment. Uh, you don't have to be a preacher for God to use you. You don't have to be the deacon for God to use you. You, you don't have to be the great choir director or the great choir singer for God to to use you. God can use you where you are. He can use you just the way you are. He'll use all your skills. Can I tell you that your skills are not for your finances. Your skills are not for your career. Let me tell somebody, let me talk to somebody because you think you work a job just to pay your bills. You think you work a job just to have money in your pocket. But God gave you a unique set of skills to bring into the kingdom of God uh, to work the kingdom of God for God's good pleasure. Uh, I want somebody to latch hold to this vision uh, that because you are uh, a doctor, because
because you are scientists, uh, because you drive vehicles and you can lift up bobcats and you can drive all of these heavy machinery. Uh, it's not just for you to have a living, uh, but it's for you to work in the kingdom. Uh, I need you to nut your neighbor say, baby, let's work in the kingdom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you don't have be a preacher uh, to be used by God. You don't have to be a preacher to hear God's voice. Uh, all God wants is a willing heart. Uh, somebody that will say, here am I, Lord. Uh, use me. Here am I, Lord. Uh, send me. Do I have anybody in here that will say, here am I, Lord. Uh, use me. The Bible says that God gives Nehemiah a strategy. And the people in verse number 6 of chapter number 4 said they were ready to work. They were ready. They were excited to work. I'm not saying, I pray. I want you to lay hands on yourself just a few moments and say, God, make me excited to work in your ministry. I say, Lord, give me strength. Give me energy. Give me tenacity. Give me know-how. Say, God, I want to work in your kingdom. Do I have anybody in here that's ready to work? says that God tells Nehemiah, here's how you're going to repair the walls. He said, gather the people. You got the supplies, you got the resources. The Bible says, and the people were excited about building the walls. They were building the walls. And all of a sudden, they got halfway through with the building of the walls. Somebody say halfway. halfway. Whenever you get halfway to something, there will be opposition to make Draw back. Let me say this again. Whenever you get halfway to a task, whenever things are moving real easy and you're halfway there, look for the devil to raise his ugly head. Look for the devil to pop his head up because he knows what God is getting ready to do for you is so great that if he don't stop you halfway, you will believe you can complete the task. I'm here to tell you somebody, don't quit now. God is on your side. I need you to high five your neighbor say, baby, don't quit. Don't throw in the towel. God is on your side. The Bible says that they get halfway through it. Uh, it reminds us of this building that we're looking at. As a church, we're looking at a building. And we almost there. And I can see the devil raising up his head. And I said, well, look at the devil. But I'm like a I'm like a hungry kid. I'm like, yeah, I've been waiting for you to show up. I've been waiting for you to stick up your ugly head. It was moving too smooth. It was going too great. I was looking for you. If you showed up, I'm ready. If you did show up, I'm still ready. Look at somebody say, I'm looking for the devil. Oh, y'all not gonna say that. See, I, I, I made y'all, I made y'all, I made y'all do that. And the reason why, the reason now you not looking for the devil huh, is because you don't know who you are. Huh? I, I tried to get through this message real fast, but I got a detour. Huh? Anybody seen Jason Bourne? Anybody seen Jason Bourne? The movie that there are four films, and I love the movie. It's by a man named Robert Loveland. It's a fictional character, and this Jason Bourne is the classic story of someone who forgot who he was. In the film, Jason Bourne doesn't know who he is. He doesn't know that he's Jason Bourne. Now, Jason Bourne is a highly trained agent, a special agent. He's trained to fight bad. Bad guys. Uh, he can get the enemy in multiple ways. Uh, he's very strategic in his movements. Uh, his movements are calculated. Uh, being able to get in and out of places. Uh, but despite having all of these skills uh, and despite having all of this ability, uh, something happened to Jason Bourne. Uh, while he was on that boat, uh, he got shot uh, and fell off the boat. Uh, and nearly drowned. And in the course of him being shot and nearly drowned, it caused him to have amnesia. So he forgot who he was. But in the story, he was sitting in a restaurant one day, and all of him, all of the confusion of who he is, what was his purpose, all of a sudden it 
dawned on him, he noticed that we, without even thinking about it, that he had memorized every license plate in the parking lot of the restaurant. He noticed without even thinking about it how he had detailed information on everyone in the restaurant. Without even thinking about it, he would hear foreign languages and people would talk to him in foreign languages and he could speak in the foreign languages without even thinking about it. And all of a sudden he said, who does this? Look at somebody say, who does this? It's the right question because the only people that do that are highly trained agents by a state sponsored source. He is a highly trained agent that can memorize license plates. He's a highly trained agent that can pick out details of everyone in the restaurant. He's a highly trained agent that is fluent in multiple languages. Yes, you 
and the heir of Sodom. Uh, and that's what your children of God got to learn. Uh, you can't let adversity stop you. Uh, you can't let hard times stop you. Because uh, hard times are just muscle memory. Uh, hard times are just making you stronger. Uh, hard times are just building you up. Uh, hard times are just fortifying you. Uh, hard times are letting you see what you are made of. Uh, God does not want to destroy any of us. Uh, but what God wants to do is make us giants in Him. Uh, God wants us to be what He has called us to be. Uh, and that's what you got to tell the enemy. Uh, say, devil, uh, enough is enough. Uh, take your hands off my marriage. Uh, take your hands off my son. Uh, take your hands off my wife. Uh, take your hands off my child. I wish I had some Holy Ghost anointed people in here. They would be powerful. Uh, brave enough. Uh, you got 
got to do. He said, it's time. It's time for you. You've been, God's been doing some stuff in your life. God's been fighting. God gave you favor with Artaxerxes. God gave you favor with the people. God did it. God was going before you. God was going before you. And he was making a way. But God says, I want to know how much you invested in this thing. I want to know if you got some skin in the game. So when God says, this round right here, you don't have to fight. Look at somebody say, it's time to fight.
This wild boy, twenty old Alexander McGrath. <laughs> he was a wild boy. God rest his soul. That boy chased me all the way home, and I was already a runner. Since I was booking it home, and I got home. I didn't see nothing to mama. I didn't see nothing to daddy. But I was looking out the window to see where he was. And he was on my street. But he didn't know which house I was in. And my brother DJ, come here, DJ. He said, boy, what you doing? What you out there looking out that window for? I said, I ain't looking out nothing. He said, oh, yes, you are. He said, what you looking out there? He said, boy, you scared. I said, yeah, man, I'm scared. That's a wild child. DJ said, forget that. DJ went outside. Walked up to Alexander McGrath. Said, if you ever touch my brother again, I'm going to kill you. Man, I can't fight.
melodies. I, I speak it right now in the name of Jesus. That will destroy the youth. That will break every hindrance, break every fountain. In the name of Jesus, so run the devil away. In the name of Jesus, I speak life. I speak healing in your life. Emotional healing. I speak healing in your mind. I speak healing in your heart. I speak healing. Everyone that treated you bad, mistreated you, misunderstood you. I speak it right now. I break it right now in the name of Jesus. I press a new fresh anointing upon you. I lay my hands upon you. A freshness is coming in the name of Jesus. Give God some praise.
We also ask that when you put your offering in, unfold it, and your envelopes place them face down. Amen. 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 Amen.
And we our Bible study starts at 6.55. So I'm looking for all of you all. Say all, all three of y'all. All three of y'all. All three of y'all. I want you all to be here with us on Tuesday night. Also, we have young people service on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. And immediately after service at 2 p.m. today, we will be meeting at the Bell Price Park in Belleville, Illinois. If you don't know where Bell Price Park is, if you know where the county jail is in St. Clair, don't 